So, welcome, welcome to Other Tone. Welcome, welcome. Alana welcome. Heim is with us, but she's not with her sisters. And why? <laughs> why? Why are you not with your sisters? Because you're starring in a huge movie and everyone thinks you're going to get a, a nominated for an Oscar, which is insane. Let's go. Can you just... Her internet went out, I think. <laughs> yes, she does. Can you definitely hear has the internet went out. <laughs> I've been frozen this whole time. Uh, we could tell by your face. Yeah. You had a froze face. We could see you. So Paul Thomas Anderson did Magnolia. He totally should do a movie on, he'd be so good at doing a movie on um, Mercury and Retrograde. Wow. Oh yeah, totally, 100%. He so should just do it all about the star signs. You, mm. you should just tell him he's gotta do a film ba that just basically shows, you know, all of the misunderstandings since, you know, <laughs> Mercury and retrograde is such a thing. A hundred percent. It would be. If, if it, would it didn't be happen, so good. If it didn't happen in the eight one eight, though, he's not doing it. It's true. It has to be in the valley. <laughs> it happens That's in the where valley. Every, don't it? All of his movies are from. So listen, yeah, I know Mercury, what, Mercury I know, happens everywhere. Yeah, it happens in the valley. I know what it is. <laughs> I kind of know what you know from from you guys and being around y'all, but. That would be cool for somebody to make a movie to kind of really break down to like people who don't. So we really understand know. it. I know it's like you know, it's a it's a period of time where Mercury is in a certain spot, and it gets confusing. But don't is it like sometimes is is specific things like is it like sometimes a conversation? Then I heard somebody sometimes like electronic up like so yeah is it, yeah. So Mercury is the planet for like communication and like devices okay. and things like that, right? It's also the planet of re. So whenever that planet gets very close to Earth, we, we think about reevaluating, reassessing, reloading, mm. all, you know, reminding, rethinking, you know, reprocessing. Remote control. And um, yeah, um, well, that too. Uh, <laughs> but that's electronics, right? Yeah. It's a remote, right? That's, so you're correct. But the thing is, is that like a lot of people are like, oh, you know, what's the difference? You know, my computer was working that day. Was network Mercury not working on me? And it's a lot like, you know, Mercury is just like any other planet. Like the sun, you know, gives us, you know, photo, sun has photosynthesis. It also gives us vitamin D. But depending mm -hmm. on where you're standing and what you have on, you might not get the vitamin D. One person may get vitamin D more than another person. And guys are both standing next to each other, right? Yes. So, you know, Every planet has like its own, its gravity has its own, you know, energy, force, variation of, of, of effects. And Mercury is the one on with communication and electronics. Okay. And so a lot of times you'll find that like when Mercury's in retrograde, you know, things just go like haywire. And a lot of times you can't necessarily explain why it's happening. Um, See, the thing is, is that people debate these things all the time, but like, you know, the moon, because it's close, we go, oh, we know why we have ways and we have when. Oh, it's the moon. Got it. You know, or why we call people, you know, they were, were to, they call people crazy. They would say that they're loony. Well, they would say that's because of a full moon or whenever the full <laughs> oh, yeah. moon's out. There's like, yeah. the crime is different or, and, and honestly, with certain people who, who sense things subtly, like some people can really feel when there's a full moon, you know, I people kind of act a little bit different, you know, just look around Walmart when it's a full moon. It's crazy. Well, always crazy you know? in Walmart, girl. You know, <laughs> um, question though. All right. But then when, when, when it's in retrograde, what, what does that mean? Is closer or is further away or is well, it's tilting? Well, retro, retrograde was a perception that it was going backwards, but it's not going backwards. You could kind of look at it like, you know, the solar system is like a track and you know, one person running fast um, on one lane and somebody else is closer to the sun, that one is going to appear to go around faster, right? But depending on the vantage point, some of those will look like when you're running, when you're going, when one planet is going further than another one, another one is, has a slower revolution around the sun, it'll appear that it is going backwards, but it's not going backwards, it's just going slower. 
Mm. So they call it Mercury in retrograde, but it's really not in retrograde. So we don't know what the hell we talking about. No, no, no. That's just <laughs> basically. that's just what they that's just what they that's just what they've called it over time. But it doesn't really go backwards. It's just that uh, well, the, from the planet that you're on, the vantage point is it, it looks like the other planet is going backwards. But so, when that happens, when that happens, what is definitely happening is the other planet is ahead, and it, and it's pulling. That gravitational pull is pulling. So it's just, you know, imagine, you know, all of these planets are in the solar system. For whatever reason, they haven't gotten outside of the sun's gravitational pull. They've been held into their perspective slots. So if you look at an orrery and you turn it around, you'll see, you know, what planet is going to be where as you turn them, they all have their own respective speeds. You know, the Earth turns around, the Earth spins at, a uh, thousand miles per hour, but then the Earth goes around the solar system, you know, every year, fifty-five thousand miles per hour. So that's the Earth's, you know, yeah. sort of the Earth is you know, identity, R right? So then you got the rest of the planets; they go at their own speed, and they turn around and they they rotate at their own speed or whatever. But that, all, but when it's when it's going around, when it's spinning, it's telling you that it has a gravitational force, and those forces all affect mankind very differently. Now, people will say, oh, that's bull you know, but the dung beetle pushes dung in a straight line because <laughs> it, yeah, literally, it pushes yeah. this ball in a straight line in deserts and doesn't at all because it is, it has a GPS system that works out with like the, the Milky Way. That's, that's connected so to the Milky Way. That's the reason why it's straight. That's oh, you crazy. look at all these animals that are nocturnal why, you know, why a whole bunch of deers don't do no kind of sign language or speak Spanish or speak Portuguese, <laughs> but they all know to go, go and left and then go right and then go left and go right and then jump and then go left and go right. And nobody's whispering or nothing, you know, or a school <laughs> of fish. They're they, they they not doing no sign language, you know. There is obviously a bunch of forces that we really can't really explain. We only understand 5% of the, 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 the universe, right? So, you know, imagine these people trying to tell us that, Mercury and retrograde ain't real, right, Alana? Oh, I believe it. I mean, that was the most beautiful. I mean, I, I understand it more after that. Thank I feel you, like thank everyone you, needs to hear you. what you just said. Thank you. It's all okay, good. Well. Neil, 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 Neil deGrasse Tyson, my brother, is flicking his phone <laughs> off right now while he's listening to this podcast. He don't, he don't rock with that. All right, one he's question. Like, before, we, look, before we even go <laughs> down here, I got one more question about that. Then we can get that. I just need to know this. So say we get to Mars, we get there... And, you know, we find out there's some people there or a lifestyle there, life form there. They can be like, Earth was in retrograde. Yeah, no? depending on where we are. Yeah. So we get there, they be like, yo, y'all been shit this whole time. Y'all been, <laughs> Earth has been spinning backwards and, you know, y'all got well, all... See, up. I'm just joking. Well, here's right, the thing. Let's talk. Here, no, 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 no. It's funny that you say that because I thought about it. Like when you go to Mars, I wonder if your signs are going to be the same because it's not based the first. It's not based on an Earth day, right? Their their calendar is very different. Their gravitational pull is very different. So, you, you, all of your is going to be totally off when you go there. Like you might you you're a Sagittarius. You might get there on Mars and not be yeah. a Sag anymore. You might be. Some oh my other. God. Hold on, Alana. Can yeah. you explain that? Do you do you? Do you know what he's saying? Because I'm lost again. Yes, I, I, I completely understand what he's saying. That your sign, because well, where, wherever we are, your, your zodiac sign, it comes from the moment that, like, your whole chart is when the moment that you're born, where the planets are, the location right. that you're at. So I guess if we go to Mars, I could be a Gemini or an How? Aries. Or, you could. Because, because Mars, I was Mars, 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 this, Mars I was, doesn't have a 365 day year. I don't know how long, how many days. But yeah. I was still, and by the way, I was still born here, though. You were born here, but you got to understand the gravitational pull from each of those planets are going to affect you differently now because you're in Mars. And my sign change? It yeah. might. L That's listen, crazy. listen. I'm let lost. me ask you a question. I all I if thought you, I knew. Let me ask you, you're not lost. You're not lost. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. When you go, when you live in Norfolk, Virginia, and you go and live in England for 20 years, do you still have the same accent when you're there? No. Your accent's going to change. Your but I'll still be a Sagittarius in England, won't I? 
<laughs> yeah, still be a Sagittarius I, in England. You'd be a Sagittarius there, but what I'm saying is you would adapt to that environment and yeah. those laws would begin to govern your life yeah, and your perspective. Yeah. I see and so if we have 365 days here and we have a planet that is like, you know, 12 million miles from the sun, you know, whatever it is, once you get to another planet, all bets are off. Everything changes. Your, your relationship to the sun changes. By the way, there's radiation there, right? There's a whole bunch of things. Listen, we, here's the thing we're not doing. We're not talking about licorice pizza. <laughs> That's what we need to be talking about, which is the coolest name ever. We honestly don't have to. I love talking. I mean, I'm from L.A. I love talking about star signs. It's my, it's my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> okay. Nah, what, what sign are you? I'm a Sagittarius. Earth. And I'm a true Sagittarius. What? Okay. True means... means. I, I really do, like, connect to my sign. Me too, I feel right? very connected to my sign. I love to travel. I'm very optimistic. I'm loyal. I can bite. I have a very strong opinion, and I, and I can't keep it in. Like, you bite. You can, you can snap at people. I, I mean, I, I snap at my sisters all the time. Oh, okay. When, when is your birthday? You're very though? opinionated. When is birthday? That's I'm just... Dis- December? December 15th. Oh, yeah. I'm November 28th, but I think I'm a true size. Oh, you're size. early. I'm a true size, though, right, bro? I feel it. Oh, what'd you say? I mean, yeah, I mean, I would say, yeah, you're, you're definitely a Sag, for okay. sure. But I had no idea, Alana, that you were, you were a Sag, but that makes all really? the sense in the world. Yeah, I had no idea. I feel it. I feel I'm it. I'm a Sag. We the best. That's actually an interesting segue into the movie because I remember you using that exact birthday in the movie, right? I did use that birthday. I couldn't, I didn't think of another birth. I could have said any day. I didn't need to use my birthday, but I was so nervous that I said my birthday. <laughs> so I'm a sad, Alana Kane is also a Sagittarius, my character. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. So let's talk about the movie a little bit, actually. Um, sure. How did you, first off, meet? Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, because this is like a gift from God that this is the first movie you're in. And I know that he works with your band a lot. I how, know. How did you guys actually meet in the beginning? It is fitting that we like just talked about stars and the universe and everything, because I really do feel like it was like this universal thing. This whole movie, this whole experience felt like a very like weird coincidence. There was crazy coincidences, crazy things. But um, I met Paul well, my mother taught Paul when she was around my age and Paul was like, I think, seven or eight at the Buckley School. And my mom was an art teacher. I mean, actually thinking about it, Pharrell, I feel like we, when we were all in the studio together, we had crazy connections, too. I feel like we're, we have a universal connection, too, with Esty and Pi Day and everything that we were talking about with Rashida mm-hmm. and Kadada. Anyways, yes. I'm getting off the point. Crazy. I just thought about crazy. it. <laughs> um, but... Um, Years go by and we always, you know, we're a fan of Paul and um, Yorma Tacone, uh, his brother, Asa Tacone, who's an electric guest, was like, Paul Thomas Anderson wants your email. And and that's how we got connected. And we weren't going to tell him about my mom because I hated all my teachers. And we got to his house in Tarzana and immediately Esty was like, my mom taught you. And he ended up, we said my mom was Miss Rose and he ended up loving my mom. And so I feel like for years, we kind of always wanted to connect with him because not only is he like the king of the, I call him the king of the valley. I feel like he hates when I call him the king of the valley, but he's brought so much um, love and attention to the valley and has painted it in such a, I, I love the way that he paints the valley um and i felt like we always were going to be friends and then and then it kind of just happened and then we went on to do a a bunch of music videos and then he asked me to do this movie and now i'm here (laughs) i I think you should tell him also the story about the painting uh oh yeah so my mom so my mom had when we told him that my mom had taught him he had this painting. He like went into his son's room and there was a painting of the mountains from Close Encounters of the Third Kind because he was a huge Spielberg fan when he, even when he was young. And he painted it with my mom and he had kept it 
over the I mean forever he still has it and he always says like it's crazy that I kept this painting because I moved a million times I've been it's been in my possession since you know I was a kid and I've never let it go and it's because I painted it with your mom because my mom really was like I mean I've talked to you guys about my mom before but my mom is a is incredibly a, a an incredible beautiful baby angel like she loves creativity she loves um bringing things out of people and, and letting them be free. And I think that's why he loved my mom so much. It's crazy also because uh, all your whole family's in the movie. Your, yeah. your mom and your dad play your mom and your dad. Your sisters play your sisters. Um, it's how was, wild. What, what, how was that? What, what, There's a lot of keto information out there. What the so I wanted to go ahead and make something simple. A beginner's keto <laughs> meal plan. Something that Does someone have a keto thing? That was amazing. <laughs> It's really coming. It's really co- going back to Mercury's in retrograde. Mercury, Mercury, it really does yeah, feel like it's it's proving our point. It's proving our point. What was it? It was an open tab, and it was a guy who was te- uh, <laughs> trying to teach you what keto actually does. Oh, I was reading oh, that, or listening to it last night. Uh, Scott, are no, you going keto? I was thinking about it. <laughs> oh wow! Well. I've done it. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's, Scott, can your dogs do keto? <laughs> they already do. All yeah. protein. That's yeah. what keto is? Keto. Uh, mostly. All protein. Fats. Fats. <laughs> New South um, But your parents are in the movie, and like, how, how did you find out that you were actually going to be in this movie? I mean, it's, uh, it's a crazy story because I really do think it kind of goes back to like, me and I feel like me and my siblings met Paul at like, I'm going to take you really back. Um, but I feel like when me and my siblings met Paul, it was like the perfect time to meet him because it was after our first album and we were making our second album and we were just so burnt out. We were like incredibly burnt out making our second album. And we had during our first album, because we had always been this way, but we had created this world around us that we shut everybody out. Like we didn't want anyone's opinions so like we shut everyone out and just kept it to like me my siblings and Ariel Rekshide who did our first album and I feel like everyone was kind of just like oh okay Hyam's got it like they can do it and and no one ever asked us any questions which was great because we could do whatever we wanted but then when it came to our second album every decision that we made felt so do or die like it felt so crazy and we were so burnt out and we, all we needed was like help. We were just like, we don't know what we're doing. Cause again, we were like babies and making like, we felt like babies making grown up decisions about like our, our futures. And it, we were so, we felt so unequipped. And then we meet Paul, who was really the first person in a very long time that just wanted to help and like supported us. And, and you guys know, like it's so rare to find people that just love what you do and just want to be like, I'm here for you and not, and just want to like make amazing things. Like I had, Paul is like the first person that was like that for us. So when we met him, I mean, before I met him, I felt like I was like, I kind of lost a little bit of myself. Like I lost a little bit of this like rambunctious like young girl that was like, you know, didn't like kind of threw like everything to the wind. And it was like, Oh, very Sagittarius. Like, Oh, I'll do, you know, I'm riding the wave. And then I became super, we all became like super depressed making the second album because we were all going through kind of crazy things. And then we meet Paul, who is this like bright light. And then working with him kind of brought back this like mischievous person that I was. And, and he, he made me feel like I was fearless again and so when thinking about doing this movie, I mean, it's, am- it's amazing what you can do without fear. Because Paul always made me feel like I never ha- needed to have fear because he had my back. And so when he asked me to do this movie, I think he kind of saw that, like, I w- I'm always down to kind of do new things. And, and I'm, I rarely ever say no to a challenge. I think that also is a Sagittarius trait. Um, very adventurous, like love trying new things. And, and I also have a problem of just immediately saying yes. And then being like, how do I do this? Like, I'm just going to say yes now. And then future Alana will figure out how to deal with it. Um, and so when he asked me to do it, I immediately said yes. And then I was like, how, what do I do? And, and it was, 
insanely scary because I've never acted before and I've never done anything like this. But because I had Paul to support me, it was like I jumped right in and it and it was incredible. I mean, it was one of the best experiences of my life. Wow. Very long winded answer to your question. No, it was, no, no, it's, it's amazing. Great. When he first reached out to you guys, was it because he heard the album and wanted to reach out to you guys? Was, was that the yeah, he intention? heard forever. He heard forever on the radio. And then he looked at our liner notes and we had thanked Asa, our friend Asa on the liner notes, because he gave me my first job, which was singing jingles. Mm. I used to sing like jingles for companies. Amazing. And he he when I was like 16, he gave me my first job. And um so we thanked him on our liner notes and Paul had seen that he was thanked and was like, oh, I know him through your Michikone who's in the Lonely Island. And he that's how he got to us through our line. Who would have known? Liner notes actually matter. That's like the one thing on the record. Like, is anyone going to read these liner notes? Like, is well, anyone going to read the thank yous? And, and that's how we got really connected to Paul. It's the people who study the details. I mean, you can look uh, uh, in one of his movies and see an in insignificant sign on the wall. And he probably thought about it for like two or three days, oh, what that sign was going to say. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I was always curious, and this is kind of a uh, side thing, but I was always curious in his movies if the music is so well done and it has such a specific tone. Um, and it's been that way in every single movie that he's in that I know he's really into music. But I was wondering if he writes scenes with a song in mind and you see it in the script that the, the song, this is the song I want to play here. There was one, the opening scene where I'm walking in the school, um, there's this, the song that's playing behind me is The July Tree um, by Nina Simone. And he had that already. That was like the first song that he had put in the movie. And he knew he wanted to open the movie with that song. It's, it, it's a gorgeous song. And he knew like where, where my like musicianship comes into making this movie is he knew that I could walk on beat without having it play over the, over the um, speakers. So he like played it for me in my ear and was like, just walk to the beat, but I can't play it for you. So you have to keep it. So I like, oh God, poor connection. That's genius. Oh God. We can hear you. Oh God. Oh no, we can hear oh, you. No. Hear okay, you. I'm yeah. back. Um, no, he <laughs> played it in my ear and then <laughs> I, I had to keep them. <laughs> I had to keep the metronome in my ear and I did it. And, and that's the beginning of the movie. But yeah, everything else, everything else came in after. <laughs> this, By the way, geez. if you would have ended up, if, if you guys were sitting in that opening scene at the, what's going on? <laughs> She was like, and then it was playing, and then, oh, God, poor connection. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded, you sounded, it was out of delayed so reaction because, because I'm listening to what you're saying, but then I'm hearing you, you like sounded so, like, <laughs> you sounded like so, like, terrified that this had happened to you so again sad. in the middle, <laughs> so in the middle sad. of your information. And I couldn't help but laugh. It's funny. But that's amazing that he had you like walk, you know, without, yeah, like like to the beat in your head without like listening to it, you know, while recording. That's like crazy. I actually heard him say in the interview that uh, he knew you'd be able to act because he's seen you keep rhythm in making music with your sisters, that just using words, you would have been able to do the rhythm. You would have figured the words out no matter what. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's... Have you guys, I mean, I'm, if you see me play live, I have like the craziest setup of all time. I'm the one, I, I basically play all the instruments that my siblings don't want to play. So like, I have like a keyboard, a drum machine, a cowbell, like shaker, guitar, microphone. Like I have, it's like a wizard's setup. And my sisters have never been like, you know, like, oh, like if it's too hard, don't worry about it. Like you don't have to play all the instruments. They're like, no, you have to. F oh, God, the poor connection is back. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm coming back. Oh, oh, ha, 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 ha. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that stopping those? Oh, man. Oh, um, my I know goodness. it's always at the oh, like, climax my, my of my story, too. Back. It's like at the peak of <laughs> what I have to say. Oh, God. Oh my God, it's back again. But you're not cutting out, though. I'm so sorry, you guys. 
blame spectrum. Okay, it's happening. I can feel it. All of us gotta go. The, <laughs> you back? We can hear you. You good? You oh. didn't? You never cut out. <laughs> she can't hear us though. Oh, she can't hear us. Oh, no, <laughs> her panic is amazing. That's why she's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's freezing on her end, so she thinks it's that we can't hear her. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Yo, we got to act like we saying something like... Oh, she just hung up? Yeah. <laughs> There's a boot. <laughs> Hey, yo, man. Oh, she's not. We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> can you hear us? I can hear you laughing. I can't see any of you. Oh, oh you can't see us. Oh. Okay. Now I'm back. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. It's so good. <laughs> By the way, can you hear us right now? Now I can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay. When, oh. we, when you're talking, we can hear everything and see everything. Yeah. It's amazing. Stop. So when you're cutting out... We can, we can you hear and see. We you just can't hear oh, us. Uh, That's why he's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, we're listening to you say, oh, God. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Wait, wait, oh, man. wait. Okay. I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yo! Oh my god. I'm so happy. I mean, this is like, oh my god, I'm the, this goes down as one of the more embarrassing moments of my life. No, no, no. no. You was good. It's you not good. you. No, it's beautiful. It's not you. It's not you. <laughs> you was good. We can hear you the whole time. Oh. <laughs> oh my this god! Did awful. you see me go like this? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, we, god. Can you. we can hear you. So when you was doing that. Oh. I oh, got you, man. Sage man. power. I got you. Uh, oh. <laughs> you crazy, man. You are really crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, this guys. is amazing. Listen, <laughs> Alana, we love this. You have no idea. Yeah, and I'm not laughing at you. It's just the mercury of <laughs> oh, it no. all. It just And the panic so in your funny. voice is <laughs> priceless. You're like, and then... You know, and just and Paul's a really sweet guy. And oh, oh no, oh, oh God, not again! No, 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 no. <laughs> poor, poor so connection. Like, is it saying poor connection? It's amazing. It's coming across when you when you, when you when you think it's freezing. It's saying poor connection on your end. It just says poor connection. You guys go completely black, oh, and then it's just okay, me. Okay, okay, okay. And so I think you can't. But honestly, no, I do. I love it. This we, is the fun time. All time. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> This is so funny. I don't even remember what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yo. Oh, man. Listen, you're this is, yeah, yeah, this is awesome. Good. And and this interview is so good and so colorful. And you're going to do like, <clears throat> you're going to do like press junkets. They're going to be very serious. They're going to ask you about like who you are, where you come from, you know, you know, the fact that you're in a band and how is it doing a film? And they're going to hit on all those notes. I guarantee you, none of them will illustrate the color of your personality like this episode is going to. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And, and like people seeing you in a vulnerable place, you know, Mercury and retrograde happening to you, you being such a champion um, about it and... <clears throat> just like your great, vibrant energy, just as vibrant as when I first met you three, when you guys were Aww. young. I mean, like really young. 
um, talking about the fact that you guys did music. It's like, I think this is going to be one of your most like shiniest moments. I, 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 uh, I just, I'm just saying just because we're it takes a, it together. It could, yeah, man. Cause it takes a I lot. It takes a lot to get the general public to, to get to know you and fall in love. You know what I mean? Like the, people are going to do interviews, but this, this is like where you, this is your raw self. This is the coolest part. And we're honored to have that. And by yeah. the way, it wasn't just you going through this Mercury retrograde. It was like all of us. Yeah, yeah. But to oh, yeah. me, I just was like laughing because I'm looking at all four screens and <laughs> <clears throat> you're like freaking out. And we totally see you. We hear you, but you don't see us. And we have no way of telling you that. And so you're still like panicking and we can't tell you this is Mercury. This is the, this is the film that Paul should make with you. I mean, in addition, I in, I in really addition to licorice pizza. Yeah. Yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I love it. This is the funniest of all time. I'm so happy that I'm here with you guys right now. <laughs> nah, it's great. It's amazing. So let me ask you a question. After this movie, did you fall in love with acting? Do you want to do it again? Yeah, I mean, I did. It is crazy. I mean, I did the whole movie during the pandemic. I had the craziest pandemic. Uh, experience because I was fully doing this movie and so the thing that's crazy is that they did movies without masks I haven't I've only done a movie with masks on so it's pretty nuts but um no I love it it was so fun and it was also fun being in the 70s and it was fun you know like being in the valley with my family it was it was all good <laughs> it's amazing do you think this experience will make you want to go study acting so you can take on other roles? I would love to. I mean, I have to go on tour first. I have to, the band is still my number one love. I love playing music. I've always loved playing music. I think this is just, it's a crazy weird left turn that I never thought would ever happen, but in, in the best way. Um, and yeah, I would love to. I would love to do all that. I love learning new skills and doing things. I would love to, you know, study and, and try try more, you know, roles. Who knows? I don't know. I, all right. So you just said that you're about to go on tour. If Christopher Nolan calls tomorrow and says, I want you to be the co-lead with DiCaprio in, in the next movie and it lands when your tour is planned, <clears throat> what's the answer? Oh my god! Wow. I have to go on tour. I have to. Whoa, I have to go on tour. Cool. That's not. The, that's not. The no answer. disrespect to Christopher <laughs> Nolan, Leonardo DiCaprio. Of course, I I'm obsessed with them both. But I mean, being on the road and playing live, especially not being able to during COVID mm. and not being able to play our new record live, was like it killed me. It killed both of my me like me and both my siblings. Like we that was our that was everything that we wanted to do with this album was play live. And now that fingers crossed things are happening and, and we're able to go on the road. I mean, I wouldn't trade that for anything. That's like, that's my home. That's cool. I, as, uh, as your friend, I think the um, re response should be, uh, do you have roles for Daniel and Esty in the movie? Yes. <laughs> if all three of us could be, if all three of us could be, you know, sister wives with Leonardo DiCaprio, we would. Why not? <laughs> uh, but that's amazing. I mean, you uh, do you think you would feel safe working with another director? Good question. I don't know. I mean, with Paul, it's funny. Like me and Paul have a, a really crazy friendship that, he, I couldn't have done this movie with any other director. There's no way. I mean, as I couldn't have started acting with any other director. I mean, getting on set with Paul every, because I had known him for music videos, we spoke the same language and everyone that worked on the movie worked on all of our music videos, which is also, was also crazy to be like, why did you guys, we had two, we have $2 for our music videos. And the fact that Paul got his whole crew to, you know, volunteer to do our music videos, just so nice. And everyone on set was so supportive. And I don't think I could have done, I could have you know, done anything without Paul. I would love to, I mean, honestly, if Paul, if Paul called me on tour and was like, I have another movie and I was on tour, I probably would leave the tour for Paul. <laughs> <laughs> he's the only person I would drop everything for. Cause he's, I mean, he's the greatest and he's so, he's so, he was so patient with both me and Cooper Hoffman who played Gary in the movie. And he knew, 
you know, our skill set. And he pushed us to do great things. I mean, without him, there wouldn't be this, you know, art piece. That's the most beautiful part about it is that he, uh, Cooper Hoffman, who plays your co-lead, is the son of Philip Seymour Hoffman. And the fact that he, like, wrote a role for him as well, um, it just shows you what an amazing, A, friendship they must have had to be able to trust that he oh, was yeah. able to do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the funny thing is, is Gary, so Alana was written with me in mind with the Alana, you know, Alana, Alana name. It's, he was thinking about me but with Cooper. The thing, which is also like a crazy universe thing is Cooper actually was, Gary wasn't written for Cooper. I actually auditioned with like a bunch of Gary's. Like there were like so many other kids that came in for the role. And I had met Cooper a couple years before that randomly with Paul and when Cooper, when Paul had suggested Cooper, I had had such a great, t when I met him, we like, com we immediately hit it off. Even when we, I mean, this is years before licorice pizza was even a thing. Um, but Cooper, like really, it was like by chance because Cooper hadn't, uh, hadn't acted either. So when I read with Cooper, it was like, oh, we finally found the like dynamic duo of Alana and Gary. And I had auditioned with so many other people that were like, that had like a million IMDb credits that were so good, that were like way better than me. I think that I was the one that was actually the problem in that scenario. Like all these young actors were like so, you know, like had gone to acting school and had done everything. And I'm like a rat. Like I like literally, I'm like crazy everywhere. You don't really know what to expect from, from what I'm going to do next. And I feel like these child actors were like, what is wrong with this woman? <laughs> She's insane. I, it would just, we, we couldn't match energies. And then with me and Cooper, our energies matched and we kind of just played off each other the whole time. What, what was it like working with Bradley Cooper in the, in the movie? Oh my God. He's the coolest. I mean, he's the coolest. He, he was terrifying. He was so scary because he is playing this character, John Peters, who is a real person. And he and we're being, you know, terrorized by him the whole, you know, couple of scenes that we're in it together. But that was our first day on set was working with Bradley Cooper, who is like, I mean, I mean now I've heard that he's America's sweetheart. I think he's America's sweetheart. <laughs> but... It was crazy. I mean, he's such a good actor and he was like in it. He terrorized us for days <laughs> and he was so in it and like really kind of basically all we, me and Cooper did was just like look at him and try to learn as much from him as we could. And yeah, I had to drive him around in a seventies U-Haul stick shift truck for, a, for a couple days, which was, which was very nice. <laughs> It's so funny because I think he nailed the role so much. And, and I watched an interview um, of John Peters with uh, Alex Israel on YouTube. And I, it actually looked like Bradley Cooper was the person doing the interview as a joke with Alex so Israel. So crazy. That's how well I have to it. watch it. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, did you guys get to meet Barbara Streisand yet? No, I haven't met Barbara. I don't know what I'm going to do if I meet Barbara. That's a big deal for me and my family. Like that's like that's like some icon like never in my life I would ever think that I would ever be anywhere close to Barbara Streisand. I've seen her from afar once and I was way too nervous to say hi or tell her that she means so much to me and my siblings. Um, but I would love, I mean, she's, she's the greatest. She's the best. I would love, I, I was hoping that she, that we would run into each other at some point during this movie process, but hasn't happened yet. Unfortunately. We're going to put it out there. <laughs> What'd you say? Put it out there in the, in, in, in the, in the atmosphere. In the universe. <laughs> in the universe. Put it in the universe. <laughs> Barbara. Barbara Streisand. Barbara Streisand. Same. We love you. You're actually going to though. You know that, right? Oh my god. I hope I oh, don't serious? know what I would do. I don't know. And I and I better be with both my siblings because if I just meet her alone, they will never speak to me ever again. They will fully disown me as a sister. I will not have a family ever uh, anymore. The band would that would actually break up Hyam if I met Barbara Streisand without my siblings. We would never tour ever again. <laughs> All right, so Barbara calls and she wants you to play her in the <laughs> biopic. During the, oh tour. During the tour. Don't even say do? it. I would, oh, I would say yes. Are you kidding? <laughs> Come on. For Barbara? 
<laughs> no. Oh my god, are you kidding? I would drop everything. My siblings would also be like, "Go. What like why are you here? Go." But I mean, still, I I mean, I feel like you asked me if I would ever say no to like leaving the tour and I said, "No, I would never." And now I'm saying, "Yeah, I would." But <laughs> no, I mean, again, this tour is is going to be incredible. I can't wait for us to go. On. You guys start? have to come to a show. Yeah, when Ooh. does it start? We're playing the Holly. I mean, it's our. It's crazy. We're playing the Hollywood Bowl on. Oh, I, I want to say, I, I I've never played the Hollywood Bowl before. Wow. I can't believe that and you've never played the Hollywood Bowl. I love. The I Hollywood can't Bowl. believe it. We're, we're doing the Hollywood Bowl and we're doing Madison Square Garden, mm. and which is also insane. Yes, and we're we're finally going around the country to play our album, Women in Music Part Three. I mean, it's wild. I can't believe it's taking this wow. long. It came out almost two years ago. That's dope. That's wild. That means that show going to be crazy. That show going to be crazy. I cannot wait. We're like in yeah. the middle of planning the stage and all that stuff. That's like the fun part for me and my siblings, like light shows and everything, like planning lights and the stage and how it's going to look. And we're having a lot of fun. It's going to be amazing. Congrats. Yeah, man. Crazy. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> so Barbara Streisand called you and Paul called you at the same time. I love these scenarios. You guys are like, this is so hard. What is happening? Tour, this is too much. The Hollywood Bowl is coming up on the same day. You got to make a choice. What are we doing? <laughs> Come on. No. no, no I'm, joking. I'm, 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 I, I'm joking. I'm joking. Good luck with the tour, man. <laughs> that got to be exciting. Hollywood what else have you been up to? What's going on? I mean, I'm just, me and my siblings are, me and Essie and Danielle have finally started writing our next album. We're like in the studio writing new things, but, um, and we're just, I mean, we, we're just itching to get out. I think we're just, it's a new year and new incredible things are happening and mm -hmm. it's time to start a new album. <laughs> got to do it all over again. Got to like feel the feels, got to open up the diaries, got to open up fresh wounds again <laughs> and <laughs> write new songs about you know, sadness and some happiness. Just Mercury. Start it all over again. Mercury and retrograde. I honestly, after this talk, I think our next album is gonna. You heard it here first. Uh -oh. Our next album is gonna be called <laughs> Mercury and Retrograde. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling P wants to be on that album. Of course. That's the song. I would die. Would. I'll never forget the first time. The first time Pharrell uh, saw you guys. He was at he was at some music festival, right? South by Southwest. And, and the and best day of my life. Was it South by Southwest or was it the other yes. one? Yes. No, it was South by. I remember. Yeah, he he, he texts me. He's like, "This band is incredible. Have you heard of?" And 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 uh, and I was like, "Yeah, I've heard of them." And he was, and I couldn't believe that Pharrell. That was like a band that he would love, and he was just so into it. There was, it's. I I remember you saying something about someone maybe playing bass. You were freaking out about. Uh, um, well, Esty plays bass, right? You were, yeah. you, you, were, you were freaking out about her. Uh, I think we lost her. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I went subtler. I went yeah. subtle. I was like, I'm gonna be subtle this time. Yeah, I'm gonna be you did subtle good. and see if it still happens. I was like, don't do yeah. anything. Don't make any sudden moves. Um, no, and I mean, there's pictures of that day. I was, I was, I think that that was over, over 10 years ago at this point when we were at yeah. South by Southwest. And I remember I had hair. We all looked like, like mountain ladies. We all had like hair all the way down to our ankles. <laughs> we were so, we were just so, it was, it was crazy. But that was, I mean, that was a life changing day when we, when we met. Pharrell, that was a crazy day. I remember seeing you run down the stairs and being like, do not. Alana, this is your time. Like, oh, do not, because uh, it, it was the make or break moment of my life. No, because it was like, listen, I, I met you guys. How old were you guys when I met you? Well, when I really met you, which is a crazy story about the universe, we were in Miami and it was during the MTV Music Awards that were in, they did Miami one year. And we had happened to be in Miami when they were <clears throat> happening. And so everyone was in Miami. I mean, it was like the crazy. And what, I forget what year it was, but it was like one of the most amazing years in music. Oh, three or oh four. And I was like, oh god, I'm frozen again. I can see that I'm frozen again. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys can hear me, I just want you to know it's always at the peak. Okay, here we go. 
Um, <laughs> so it was, we were at, we were at in Miami and we were at a mall. I forgot Aventura which mall, mall it was. The Aventura, Aventura Mall. We were at the Aventura Mall and we like saw you from a distance and we, we were like, God, like we were, I was young. I mean, I think I was like eight, seven or eight. Yep. See? Whoa. And I, me, Essie and Danielle like concocted like this plan to be like, okay, we're just going to like say hi and like run away and like not bother him because <laughs> we didn't want to be like, we didn't like bother you. Cause you were like shopping and having, you were like so happy and having a good time. We're like, Oh, we're going to be the people that just like bother me. He's going to be so mad. And we walked up to you and you were so nice and you gave us your number. You made us each memorize a portion of your number and we said, we, we came to you, we're like, hi, we're sisters and we play music and I, we just love you so much. And you were like, you play me, you were so excited. And we like told you our whole story about how we play music with like our parents. And, um, and you gave, you gave us your number. And then years later, Whoa. we met at South by That's Southwest so while we were playing music we had like finally and that was like our first south by southwest we had finally made it out of la because we've been playing la for like six, five years and we had finally made it out of, out of la and we meet again the universe brings us together once again it's so crazy, crazy. story yeah you remember that room yes yes they were like oh we play with our parents i'm like okay because it just you know they were stars then i was like okay well look you guys call us but you, you guys call me three of you and you know each each of you you know remember. essentially remember part of the phone number uh yes that's crazy and then the next yep. time you see the band did, did, you didn't you didn't put that together then when you saw them in south by you just saw a dope band i don't know that they, they weren't in a band yet, so. were they Oh, oh okay. no! I think we we told you immediately. We were like, we actually met you when we were when yeah. I was like seven. We Whoa. like made the connection, but it was just so crazy. I mean, ta I mean, this whole thing has been about the universe, and like Paul was like a very universal thing. You were you, like a huge universal, like crazy. How do we get here? Moment. <laughs> it's just wild. That's crazy. The and world Scott. throws you curveballs. The world and really Scott. does throw you curveballs. Yeah, Scott, oh yeah, yeah, and I met Scott through Other Tone. I met Scott on this podcast, on on this you know thing. I met. Last time. That's how I met Scott. Last time we were here. Yeah. Shout out oh, to your sisters. Where, where are your sisters now? Are, are y'all all? Living? Me and my sisters live. They we live five minutes away from each other. Everyone thinks that we all live in the same house. I think <laughs> yeah. that I think people are like heartbroken when they hear that like we don't live in bunk beds. Like they get heartbroken <laughs> about it. They like yeah. think that we all live in like the same house. But I'm 30 now. I'm like 30. I need to have my own place. I can't be with my siblings all the time. Yeah. But they were very, they were like, really? Like, it's just you? They just want you on the show? They don't want us to come on? I should have brought them. <laughs> I should have brought them. Yeah. Maybe they would have figured out this Mercury in retrograde. I'm on poor connection again. <laughs> 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 Yo, man, this is funny. This is, this is funny, man. Honestly, though, like, bless you guys that you have been doing it. This has this been the craziest one that you've done with like connection? Has this been the one? Yeah, yeah. Sure. I really hope it has been. Yeah, one hundred percent. Okay, great. I feel but so. Spe I really do feel special. No, nah, it's been cool. It's though. amazing, though. It's like not a bad thing. It's like. Really, really rad. Because your reaction every time <laughs> is amazing. It's happening again. You're like, oh. It's like a robot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all this will be. All this will be. guys. Oi She's bang. like, <laughs> Oi <bang. laughs> I would love to have your sisters on, by the way. And we're back. <laughs> oh no, you guys can't see me? No. Oh my god. Oh, she can't see us. Oh god. <laughs> I sent her a picture. Oh, okay, okay. What's wrong with me? Can't What's wrong with Deuce. my connection? <laughs> I 
just look like I'm being, I'm like not even paying attention to you guys. I'm like, I look, oh my God, this is so wild. I'm just so, this photo is, oh God. I look like I'm just, I just could not care less that I want to show and I want to be here. This is too much. What do I do? God, help, text me, what do I do? <laughs> I just want you to see what I'm, oh my God, it's so embarrassing. This is what it looks like for me. This is this is all I can see right now. Can you guys see? This is what she this is what she sees right now. This is it. And there's my face. This I can't see one person. <laughs> I mean I need What do I do? Should I hang up the call? No, this is amazing. <laughs> do you understand what this is gonna sound like on this podcast? With music? Hold on. I'm coming back, but I'm staying on the phone with you. Hold on. Okay, I'm off. Hold on. <laughs> this is outrageous. This is outrageous. Okay, here we go. I swear to God. I swear. I swear. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. This is just too much. It's too much. For my for my little heart to handle, I was fully like I was like texting Scott like no one can see me. What's up, Scott? Are you back now? Yeah, I'm back. I'm hanging up on you. Bye, Scott. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Mercury is in my house. That's where it retrograded to. It's like fully. I can see Mercury. It's right over there. Alana, I want to thank you for providing me with one of the best episodes that we have had together. I just, this is, this was amazing. We have four of them this year. Usually Mercury and Retrograde, you have three. Yeah, but we have four this year. And Venus four. is also in Retrograde, so all your lost loves are supposed to be coming back into your life. And I'm frozen again. I think we can wrap it up so we can stop torturing her. Licorice pizza, you guys. You got to go watch it. Listen, this is other tone. Don't play with us. Go see Licorice Pizza after Mercury Retrograde. <laughs> My gambling websites have you listed as a potential Oscar uh, nomination. They, like, they have all the different money lines, and you're on there. Did you bet on me, Scott? I'm going to. I, I'm you gonna, better. I'm that today. Yeah, you will. better bet on me. <laughs> you're going to lose betting. all that money. Maybe bet a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's do it i love you guys i'm this is the crazy i cannot wait to see how this is edited this has been it's the craziest so interview of my life this has by far i can actually comfortably say that this has been the craziest interview of my life so i'm so happy <laughs> we were together for it congratulations i will everybody Thank go you. out and go try some of that licorice pizza yes please <laughs> All right. I love you guys. <laughs>